Hey guys, Amartya here from C4E Tech and yesterday OnePlus launched their OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro through an online event. So today's video is all about everything important that you need to know about these two devices from OnePlus. Oh, and if you do end up liking this video, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. So design-wise, both the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro borrow heavily from previous-gen OnePlus phones like the OnePlus 7T Pro, the OnePlus 7 Pro and even the OnePlus 7. There's a slight difference between the backs of both phones though. They share a similar looking camera pump, but the flash on the OnePlus 8 is to the bottom. On the 8 Pro, we have a fourth camera and the flash module sitting snug to the left of the main camera pump. Now we'll come to these cameras in a bit, but first let's take a look at the rest of the build. Like most other flagships, we have a glass sandwich design in here that is protected by Corning's Gorilla Glass on both sides. Holding them together is this metal frame. As far as the button placements go, we have volume up and down keys to the left, the power button is to the right, and slightly above that is OnePlus's alert slider. This has been a classic feature of the brand from the OnePlus 2 days, and it continues to live on with the OnePlus 8 series of devices. As far as IP ratings go, we have a very interesting situation here. So the global version of the OnePlus 8, that includes the one that would be sold here in India, will not have an IP rating. So basically similar to what we have seen with the OnePlus 7T before. However, the twist here is that the same OnePlus 8, when sold by the US carriers, does come with the IP68 rating. Now considering the fact that the hardware used in both phones are nearly identical, the global version of the OnePlus 8 should also be IP68 waterproof. But OnePlus, for some reason, has chosen not to certify it. With the 8 Pro though, things are much simpler. It comes with an IP68 water and dust resistance rating. Taking a look at the front, we have full screen AMOLED panels on both phones. There's a tiny punch hole to the left that holds the 16 megapixel selfie shooter. The bezels here are minimal and the panel curves towards the edges like the S series from Samsung, giving us the illusion of an end-to-end -end display. According to DisplayMate, the OnePlus 8 Pro has the best smartphone panel out there, with the regular 8 also performing pretty well. That's where the similarities between the two panels end though. On the 8, we have a smaller 6.55 inch Full HD plus 90Hz display. Looking at the spec sheet, it kind of seems similar to the AMOLED panel that we had seen on the OnePlus 7T. The only apparent difference being the water drop notch that's now replaced by a punch hole. The 8 Pro on the other hand has a bigger 6.78 inch screen. The resolution is higher too. Quad HD plus like we had seen on the OnePlus 7 Pro. The icing on the cake here is the refresh rate. The OnePlus 8 Pro can go up to 120Hz at QHD+. Accompanying that, we have a 240Hz touch sampling rate. Now we have seen the S20 series sport Quad HD panels and 120Hz refresh rates, but Samsung has disabled the 120Hz at the highest resolution over battery life concerns. OnePlus though lets us crank up the refresh rate all the way to 120Hz even at the highest resolution. So how does this affect the battery life on the 8 Pro? Well, we'll have to wait and find out. To take advantage of the high resolution screen and increased frame rate, OnePlus has also included a dedicated MEMC chip on the 8 Pro. Basically what this does is it takes content that's been shot at 24 or 30 frames per second and then interpolates the frames in between to artificially inflate the frame rate. OnePlus supports this with video content on multiple apps like Netflix, YouTube and even VLC Media Player. Now we have seen this same technology being used in TVs before and it's never really impressed me much. So it remains to be seen if it does any better on the smallest screen. Now one thing that should be better with the new devices is the sound experience. We have dual studio speakers with support for Dolby Atmos on the 8 as well as the 8 Pro. So combined with those gorgeous panels, the OnePlus 8 series of phones should be great for media lovers. Taking a look at the internals, we have the same flagship Snapdragon 865 chip from Qualcomm powering both devices. That, coupled with high refresh rate displays and Oxygen OS, should result in a really smooth user experience. OnePlus phones have always been excellent when it comes to performance, and we expect that the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro will continue on the same path. Given the flagship hardware, I expect everything from day-to-day -day tasks to intensive games to run really well here. The main draw of this generation of OnePlus devices though is that both phones are 5G enabled. Speaking of connectivity, we also have support for the latest Wi-Fi 6 standard. 
Moving on to the memory side of things, we have 8 and 12 GB RAM options on both phones, paired with 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.0 storage. As with any other OnePlus phone, we don't have support for microSD here. Well, not quite. There was one OnePlus phone that actually did come with support for microSD. If any one of you remembers the name, then leave it in the comments down below. As far as battery life goes, we have a 4300 mAh battery on the OnePlus 8, while the 8 Pro sports a slightly larger 4510 mAh battery. This leads to an about 10% increase in weight from the OnePlus 8 to the 8 Pro and an added half a millimeter in thickness. Given the middling battery life of the 70 and 70 Pro, I'm really happy that OnePlus decided to increase the battery capacities this time around. The charging speed though remains the same. We have Warp Charge 30D on both phones. Along with Wired, we now also have 30W wireless charging on the OnePlus 8 Pro. Like we saw with Xiaomi's 30W wireless fast charging solution on the Mi 10, this one too uses a proprietary solution. The Warp Charge 30 Wireless from OnePlus is a $70 wireless charger that OnePlus claims can take the battery from 0 to over 50% in just half an hour. The 8 Pro also supports other Qi chargers as well, but the charging speed is limited to only 5 watts. Now pushing 30 watts of power over induction coils would generate a significant amount of heat, which is why I guess OnePlus put in this fan on the back of their wireless charging solution to keep the 8 Pro from heating up way too much. We also have support for 3 watt reverse wireless charging, good enough for charging your truly wireless Bluetooth earbuds of choice. Yep, that's what most people will have to opt for since there is no headphone jack here on either models. Finally, it's time we talked about the cameras. We have a triple rear camera setup on the OnePlus 8. It comes with a 48 megapixel primary camera with support for OIS as well as EIS and an f1.75 aperture lens. This uses the Sony IMX586 sensor from last year. We also have a 16 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro sensor. Once we get our hands on the device, we will test this camera config out for ourselves. But on paper, it kind of looks like a downgrade really. The 7D came with a 12 megapixel 2x telephoto camera. The 8 loses that in favor of a dedicated 2 megapixel macro sensor. I mean, we could already take macros with the ultra wide sensor on the 70, so I don't really know what direction OnePlus is going with this one. As far as the 8 Pro goes, we have a much more interesting set of cameras here. Both the primary and the secondary ultra wide sensors are 48 megapixels. The primary sensor in here is the 48 megapixel IMX689 that Sony developed in collaboration with Oppo for their Find X2 device. Thanks to the close tie-in between these two OEMs, we see that same sensor make an appearance on the OnePlus 8 Pro as well. This is coupled with an f1.78 optically stabilized lens. At 1x1.43 inch, this is one of the biggest sensors that we have seen in modern smartphones, and OnePlus says it should perform really well in low-light scenarios and give excellent dynamic range. The secondary ultrawide sensor in here is the older 48 megapixel Sony IMX586. It should do pretty well when it comes to both matching the details and colors of the primary shooter. We also have an optically stabilized telephoto camera here that gives us 3x hybrid and up to 30x digital zoom. Now the interesting thing here is like last year, this is supposed to be a 12 megapixel native sensor that crops in to give 8 megapixel shots at 3x zoom. The fourth camera is a 5 megapixel sensor designed to give an interesting filter effect when taking photos or videos. At first glance, it looks like a very gimmicky feature, but I would have to spend some hands-on time with these cameras before giving any final opinions. Finally, we come down to the price. So we don't yet have the Indian prices, but in the US, the OnePlus 8 starts from $699. As for the 8 Pro, it goes on sale from $899 for the base variant. Now the US prices are generally a bit on the higher side, which is why we directly didn't convert them into INR. However, the percentage increase in price from country to country remains about the same. So from the 70 to the 8 is a 16.7% increase in price, going by the US prices of course. So when the OnePlus 7T launched in India, it was priced at around 38k. Now doing the math, the final price of the OnePlus 8 in India comes out to around 45,000 rupees. Now that's before we take the increased GST into account. So with that, we might be looking at somewhere around 50,000 rupees for the OnePlus 8. So at that price, I don't 
really think the OnePlus 8 is that big of an upgrade from the 7T. We have mostly similar specs across the board and the cameras might actually be a downgrade, at least on paper. Yes, we do have the newer 865 processor with 5G, a new punch hole display, but honestly, we get all that from another BBK phone. The Realme X50 Pro is just 40,000 rupees. So that's why I'm not all that hyped about the OnePlus 8. Coming to the 8 Pro, we are still looking at a pretty significant price hike. Last year, the OnePlus 7T Pro launched at 49K, but rumors indicate that this time, the OnePlus 8 Pro might launch for somewhere at around 65K. So this means a 15K price hike. But honestly, I'm okay with this one, since the 8 Pro seems to be a legitimate flagship from OnePlus. We have all the bells and whistles like 30 watt fast wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, IP68 rating, and what on paper seems to be flagship grade cameras. So this time around, I'm actually more excited for the OnePlus 8 Pro. Yes, OnePlus might end up pricing this around the Galaxy S20 here in India, but even then, this is the first no compromises flagship phone from the brand. That's been my two cents on these two devices. Now I want to know what you guys are most excited for. And what do you think OnePlus would price the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro here in India at? Let us know through the comments below. And hey, if you guys did enjoy this video, then please like, share, subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Thanks for sticking around till the end guys. Have a good one. Cheers.